So Pixelmon just updated, adding a ton of new Generation 9 Pokemon into Minecraft. And I decided what better way to play this than to do a 100 day video using only Generation 9 Pokemon. But that's not all. This 100 day video will not be like the others I've done on my channel, because for this one, I'll be playing on my own survival world. And of course, I'll have three challenges to complete within the span of 100 days to prove whether or not I'm a true Pokemon master. First off, I wanted to complete the Paldean Pokedex. Now I know there's only 30 Pokemon in the Pokedex so far, but in order to catch all of the Pokemon, I'd have to travel far and wide, especially searching for special Paradox Pokemon in the End Dimension. So I knew this would be a tough challenge either way. Next, I wanted to catch 5 shiny Pokemon. I just like shiny Pokemon and they're pretty rare to find in the wild, so that's really it. And lastly, I wanted to catch at least one legendary Pokemon. Honestly, I would have loved to catch either Miraidon or Koridon, but sadly they're not in the game yet. But don't be afraid, as Pixmon adds more Generation 9 Pokemon in the future, I'll continue this as a 100 day series until I catch all 110 Paldean Pokemon. Anyways, without further ado, here's 100 days of using nothing but Generation 9 Pokemon. As I loaded into the world, I knew I already wanted to choose Sprigatito as my starter. Since I also chose it when I played Pokemon Violet, thankfully I spawned in a village, which meant I had both easy access to a Pokemon Center as well as a Pokemon in case I wanted to buy Pokeballs in the future. As I walked around the village, I had my first Pokemon battle against a level 10 Geodude. Luckily Sprigatito came equipped with Leafage, and I easily won. I decided to wander off from the village to see what I could find, and honestly, I did not expect to find a new biome straight away. There wasn't much here though, other than red grass, but I did see some Magikarps in the ocean and decided to grind up some levels, until Sprigatito reached level 10. I headed back to the village and saw a couple of stands with barrels and chests, which contained multiple Pokeballs. This will help out a lot when we need to catch Pokemon in the future. Anyways, I dug down into a cave so that I could mine a ton of ores, and I ended up leaving the cave with around half a stack of iron. Now as I was walking around a bit, I came across a Wiglet which I managed to catch easily. This was the first of many Paldean Pokemon I was gonna catch in this video, but before I continue my adventure, I wanted to do something new, which is naming my Pokemon after my subscribers. So if you want to be named after a Pokemon in the future, make sure to subscribe. Anyhow, I heard strange sounds underneath me and decided to dig straight down again. This led me into another cave, but I really wanted to know what was making that sound, so I kept on looking around, until I eventually found a Glimmit. Since both of my Pokemon were fainted, I had to just throw Pokeballs at it until it was finally caught. Once I resurfaced, I finally set out on my adventure, where I found a Lechonk in the wild. Sadly, I accidentally killed it, but that's alright, I found a wild small if that was able to catch not long after. As I explored the new Pixmon update in my Minecraft world, I came across great things. Like this buried ship which isn't new but contained a relic statue which sells for a lot in the Pokemart, as well as coming across several new biomes. It was easy to just get lost and really enjoy looking around for cool new things. Eventually I came across another Pokemon where I was able to sell the relic statue I collected earlier for $35,000. This was a large sum of money and would allow me to easily buy stacks of Pokeballs in the future if I needed it. But once I came across this nice plot of land, I decided to clear it out as this is where I wanted to build my house. Now usually in the past, my houses have not been the best, so I really sunk in a lot of time building this house, until finally it was time to unveil my masterpiece. And honestly, this might be the best house I've ever built, which says a lot about me since I hate building. To celebrate my new house, I fed Sprigatito all of the rare candies I had until he evolved into Florigato. Now I needed a healer to heal my Pokemon, and in order to craft it, I'd need a diamond, so I went down this cave and explored this huge mineshaft. Surprisingly, I found a piece of diamond ore in a minecart chest, which I guess works. I mean, I also found a dungeon with a stone plate in it, which would help contribute in case I wanted to summon Arceus in the future. But since I found what I needed, I left the cave and proceeded to finally craft the healer, and to wrap up this day, I found both a wild Nackley and a Tadbulb which I was able to add onto my team. And since I already had a Thunderstone, I was already able to evolve Tadbulb into Bellybolt. Feeling adventurous, I decided to head southbound and explore the world. And in doing so, I came across various structures, most notably this strange tower. 
I didn't think much of it, but when I entered, I was suddenly battling against a trainer who had a level 80 Tyranitar. To no surprise, I got absolutely bodied. However, now that I had no more Pokemon, I could easily walk around the tower and even found the Fist Plate as well as a Scroll of Darkness, in case I needed it in the future of course. But not far off from the dojo, I found this weird dome submerged underwater. I was pretty confused until I took a closer look and saw the Arc Chalice. If I ever found every single type plate, I could bring them here to receive the Azure Flute, which is a key item for summoning Arceus. But summoning Arceus can wait. I found another village and chose to settle down here for the time being. With Lady Luck on my side, I came across a shiny Magikarp. Now I'm able to catch the shiny for my goal, but that doesn't mean I'm able to use it. Near the village though, there was a swamp biome. This was important as Paldean Whoopers could spawn here, so as any sane person, I waited days for a Whoopy boy to spawn, until finally I found one waddling around the swamp. I was of course able to catch it with relative ease, but what I wasn't prepared for was this epic boss Rookie D. It completely swept my team and hit me with the reality that my Pokemon were extremely weak. This made me want to train up my team, but before I could locate the nearest Pokemon Center, I surprisingly came across a shiny Remoraid, which I was able to catch. But I also found another one of these water dojo tower thingies. Now I tried to carefully scale this tower on the side, but accidentally engaged in a battle where I happened to lose again. This prompted me to just run up the stairs and pick up the scroll of waters. And if you thought this day couldn't get any crazier, I stumbled upon a wormhole and decided, yeah sure, I could easily go into ultra space. Well, the moment I entered, I was challenged by not one, but five Pokemon at the same time. This was absolutely ridiculous, and when I did get destroyed, I actually got kicked out of Ultra Space. I knew if I wanted to have a chance to get back here, I'd need stronger Pokemon, so I trained up Florigato around the village, mainly beating up countless fishes, until it finally evolved into Meowskarada. Now, I really wanted to go back to my house, until I realized it was 3,000 blocks away. Yay! So I traveled across biomes, coming across rare Pokemon on the way back to my base. I had to scale the tallest of mountains, including this hellish biome, and even found a huge ship which I quickly stole tons of iron blocks from. There was also the buried treasure I found, as well as a wild Venusaur. I can't believe I had to go through so much, but finally, I was back home. I immediately stored all of my valuables and crafted myself a diamond pickaxe. Then I went exploring in caves till I found both diamonds and obsidian. This allowed me to make myself a nether portal, but why you may ask? Well, Pixmon tweeted a photo of cool new nether structures, and well, I love exploring new things and decided to take this opportunity to explore the nether. And in the nether, I found rare Pokemon, even stumbling upon an Orthworm, which is actually another Pokemon I needed in order to complete the Paldean Pokedex. There was also an epic Yamas boss that I ended up defeating easily thanks to Miascarada, and it actually dropped a Z-Crystal as a boss drop which was pretty cool. Eventually I stepped foot in the Nether Fortress and saw a ton of Hone Edges, and instead of a Blaze Spawner, multiple Fire-type Pokemon came out aggressively trying to fight me. I wasn't really up for a fight and just ran off deep into the fortress where I was able to find a couple of chests, including a fire plate which was super lucky. With my team weakened and food supply drained, I thought it would be better off to just leave the nether for now. With my team looking pretty weak, I defeated many wild Pokemon to level them all up. This was a very, very tiring process without an EXP all, having to constantly switch around Pokemon just so they would all earn EXP. But eventually, I had both my Lechonk and Paldean Wooper evolve into Oinkalone and Clonsire. This became the catalyst for me to evolve every single Pokemon I had so far, evolving my Smoliv to a Doliv and then into an Arboliva, evolving my Wiglet into Wugtrio, my Nackly into Nacklestack, and then into Garganackle, and finally Glimmit evolved into Glamora, evolving all of these Pokemon allow me to easily complete over half of the Pokedex. But I knew if I wanted to complete the rest, I would have to travel very far because apparently Fue Coco only spawns in Badland biomes and they're pretty rare to come by. So off I went on yet another adventure in search of a Fue Coco. As I was traveling across this huge ocean biome, I came across another shiny Magikarp. 
This was getting ridiculous, but also as I sailed across the ocean, I found different structures, such as this cruise ship, as well as this Magikarp submarine. But at long last, I sailed my way onto the shore of the Badlands biome. I had finally made it! I was nearly 5,000 blocks away from my house, but it was all worth it. Now I just had to wait until it was nighttime to find Fred Coco, which honestly spawned much faster than I had anticipated. Now that we had Fue Coco, I decided to wander around a bit, coming across yet another Fue Coco. As I was traveling around the world, I kid you not, I came across my fourth shiny in my adventure, and it was another shiny Magikarp. I could not believe this, but hey, a shiny is a shiny. More importantly, I discovered a snowy taiga biome, the perfect biome for Frigibax to spawn in. Catching it meant that we only really needed to catch a Quaxly in order to have caught every overworld Gen 9 Pokemon. But that's for future me. Present me still has to travel around 7,000 blocks just to be back at my base. One long trip later, I was finally back at my house and in desperate need to heal my Pokemon. I gladly organized my PC box and was ready to train up both Wekoko and Frigibax until suddenly Lady Luck blessed my world by having Quaxley spawn right in front of my house. Just a few Pokeballs later and I had now caught every single new Pokemon that can spawn in the overworld. It was time and I was more than ready to finally enter the end. I spent all of my materials to craft the best armored weapon I could make and now only needed to farm Eyes of Ender. Luckily I already had Blaze Powder from slaughtering tons of Pokemon in the nether and well, Ender Pearls dropped from several mobs that just so happened to spawn around my house. Defeating tons of Pokemon eventually got my Quaxly to evolve into Quaxwell. After grinding up Flint for arrows and gathering up all the Eyes of Ender, it was finally time to locate the Stronghold. Surprisingly, luck was still shining brightly on me, because the Stronghold ended up being only around 200 blocks away from my house. I dug straight down until finally I made contact with the Stronghold. All I had to do now was locate the portal room, which literally only took a couple of seconds. Oh hey look, Fue Coco is evolving into Crocolore. Anyways, it was time. I filled up the portal by placing Eyes of Ender in each portal frame, until I was transported into the End Dimension. Here I would face the queen of all the mobs, the Ender Dragon. I immediately bridged towards the End Island and started taking down crystals from each tower so that the Ender Dragon could not heal itself. This took a while to do, but eventually I destroyed the last crystal. All that was left was to defeat the Ender Dragon. I tried my best, chipping away at its health every time it perched. But since I ran out of arrows, it took a very long time. But in the middle of my fight, I found a legendary boss, Minior. I attempted to take it down, but it was just way too strong and I sadly lost the battle. Anyways, I still had an Ender Dragon to take down, so I focused on that and without too much trouble, I dealt the last blow, killing the Ender Dragon once and for all. After that long battle, I decided to go back to my base and proudly display the Ender Dragon Egg on top of my PC. But before I could explore the Outer End Islands, I decided to grind up enough food and blocks in case I needed to bridge out far. But now that I was fully prepared, I headed back into the End Dimension and built up my way through the End Gateway. And once I went through it, I was teleported into the Outer End Islands, and I gotta say, I was not expecting the new End Biomes. I spent the next few days just exploring the new End Biomes. My least favorite part was bridging over the void though, because one mistake and I was just gone. But after a bit of exploring, I decided to go back to the small Outer End Islands as I found out that's the only place where Paradox Pokemon spawn at, and the chance of them even spawning was 0.4%, so I knew we'd be here for a while. After a bit of camping, I actually found a shiny Minior. This was great, as catching it would complete my goal of getting 5 shiny Pokemon. However, when I threw my Pokeball at it, it kind of fell into the void. I didn't know this at the time, but I completely bugged out my entire game, and the only way to fix this was by restarting it. Now, I was really sad that I missed out on a cool shiny Pokemon, but I felt much better once I saw a Slitherwing spawn. It just looked so freaking cool and I wanted it on my team so badly. I learned from my mistake with the shiny Minior before and started building a wall around Slitherwing. When it came to it, I started weakening it before finally throwing an Ultra Ball. But for some reason, my trainer decided to throw it over the wall in the wrong direction and because the Ultra Ball was now going down into the void, I was stuck in the same exact glitch as before. All I could do was reset my game. 
but I had enough for now. I wanted to change things up a bit. So I took a break and left for the overworld, and immediately went to train my Pokemon up a bit, evolving my Crocolore into Skelleridge, and Quaxwell into Quaquaville in the process. Oh, we can't forget about Frigibax, who evolved into Arctabax too. After defeating yet another epic boss and receiving rare loot, I wandered off a bit and found a village just around 100 blocks from my house. To think I spent so long in this world and have only found this now is crazy. The highlight however was this church looking thing because I saw an enchantment table which I was able to seal as well as a crown that I quickly put on my head. You legally have to call me the king of Pixelmon now. I didn't really do much in this village other than stealing bread, especially in front of this police officer. But before I could leave, I actually had completed some sort of quest requirement for this NPC and was able to receive an elytra as my reward. I don't remember what the quest was or even when I got it. This is what happens when you play too much Pixmon, I guess. But nonetheless, I took my elytra feeling amazing until I realized I had no fireworks or any mending books. One epic boss later, I made my way back into the nether in hopes to easily train up my Arctabax so that it could evolve eventually but I also wanted to do some exploring. Luckily I found a bastion where I was able to steal some gold blocks. But when I entered, I was super happy because this was a treasure bastion. The chest down in the middle would have super good stuff. So I jumped down like a madman and found three pieces of netherite ingots alongside a half set of enchanted diamond armor. But as I continued exploring, I found more chests filled with even more amazing loot. Once I was done looting up the Bastion though, I decided to leave the Nether since there wasn't anything I needed here. I didn't really do much other than preparing to go back to the Outer End Islands. I wanted to buy a stack of Ultra Balls, but sadly the Pokemon near my house wasn't selling any, so I traveled to the ones I visited much earlier. It was a couple thousand blocks away, but that's alright. As long as I get Ultra Balls, it will all be worth it. Oh, I guess I'll just buy a stack of Great Balls then. Time to walk back home! And with the power of editing, I'm here. Anyways, making my way back to the End Islands, I can't do much more other than wait for Paradox Pokemon to spawn. It took a while, but what I saw shocked me. The Paradox Pokemon Iron Thorns had spawned, which is super weird since it's not in the Pokedex at all. Learning from my past mistakes, I just chucked a whole lot of great balls at it until eventually it fell in this little ditch area where I was able to safely battle it and weaken it. Sadly, its low catch rate made it super hard to catch and it wiped out my entire team in the process. But still, I was very determined and not too long after, I finally caught Iron Thorns. It still did not appear in my Pokedex, but that doesn't change the fact that I finally caught a Paradox Pokemon. I went back in the overworld to heal my team and add Iron Thorns to my party. I also took the opportunity to check back with the Pokemon and found Ultra Balls on sale. So I appropriately bought a stack for my future endeavors and then returned back into the Outer End Islands. It didn't take long for another Paradox Pokemon to spawn, but it just happened to be another Iron Thorns. A few days go by and I finally find another Slitherwing. This was my chance at redemption. I threw Ultra Balls at it and um, I caught it really fast actually. I took a break in the overworld and thought it would be a good idea to explore the world a bit, and I'm not even joking at this point. I soon found yet another shiny Magikarp. This was crazy! It meant we had found 5 shiny Pokemon, but 4 of those were all shiny Magikarps! <sighs> On a brighter note, I found a legendary boss, Corphish. Thanks to my strong team, I was able to defeat it and got a type plate and an EXP candy as my boss drop reward. When night came around though, I saw a wormhole appear in the sky and since I was a much stronger trainer than last time, I was feeling super confident and made my way into the ultra space dimension. Since the Pokemon here were super aggressive, I made my way on top of the trees and parkoured around. I was completely taken back by the new ultra space biome. It had new structures I've never seen before. They were these sewer pipes that would eventually lead to chests and beast chests. This would give me super rare items, mainly Z crystals, but also type plates. I spent the next few days exploring as many pipes that I could find in the ultra space dimension. I also ended up exploring various ultra space biomes until I decided to purposely lose so that I could be warped back into the overworld. During my time in the ultra space dimension, I collected so many Z crystals and type plates which should help out a lot in the future. Now it was time to go back to the end and hope for an Iron Moth to spawn. And I kid you not, one did spawn, but sadly it was flying over the void, making it impossible to catch. To hopefully prevent this, I expanded the Outer End Islands and made sure the platform was huge. 
It didn't take long for another Slitherwing to spawn, but eventually an Iron Moth spawned out of nowhere. It took a lot of Ultra Balls, but finally I had caught every single Paradox Pokemon. Filled with excitement, I had to add Iron Moth to my team. I mean, it just looked way too cool not to. But now the only Pokemon left to 100% the Pokedex was Baxcalibur. So I spent the day defeating different Pokemon to gain enough levels for my Artibax to finally evolve. And now, we had every single Gen 9 Pokemon in the game. That is, of course, available so far. All that was left was to find a legendary Pokemon. And with not that much time left, I sort of panicked a little bit and went into the Nether in hopes for a Groudon or Heatran to spawn. I explored the Nether, going through even more fortresses where I found more type plates and even a Master Ball. I came across an ultimate level boss too, the highest level rarity of boss that can ever spawn. It took every single Pokemon I had, but I was able to defeat it in the end, earning a Solganium Z as my rare drop. After looting a few more Bastions and Fortresses, I made my way back into the overworld and immediately took off for new land in hopes a legendary Pokemon would just spawn naturally. Trust me, I was super stressed out. Until I came across a ravine, this jogged up my memory and I remembered that I could smell ore in hopes for a Meltan to spawn. You see, every time you smelt a single ore, Meltan has a 1 in 3072 chance to spawn. So in desperation, I mined so many ores, then proceeded to smelt all of it in hopes a Meltan would spawn. Even though I smelted multiple stacks of ores, Meltan unfortunately did not spawn. With only two days left, I rushed down the mines and mined as much as I could. But as the sun began to rise, day 100 was finally here. I took out every single ingot and sadly realized I did not complete all of my goals. I was heartbroken. Not a single legendary spawned in my 100 day journey. And when I tried my best, it sadly was not enough. But in my 100 days, I've caught every single Gen 9 Pokemon, found so many shiny Pokemon, well mainly shiny Magikarp. And guess what, my adventure is still not over. As Pixmon updates and adds more new Pokemon, I'll continue to play until I've caught every single Generation 9 Pokemon. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe and be a part of the journey. See you at 10,000 subscribers. Bye! One more. I, I could not be any closer. <gasps> hey.